QuickBooks Online 2023 Bank Feeds Match and Receive Payment Form to Bank Feed Deposit. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our bank feeds practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using incognito window to open the sample company or another browser. If you're using Google Chrome, you can open the incognito by selecting three dots in the browser, new incognito window typing into the search engine, then QuickBooks Online test drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one the bank feeds practice file is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below. Let's duplicate some tabs like we do every time, putting reports in them, right click in the tab to do so, and duplicate. Right click in the tab to do so, and duplicate. Back to the tab to the middle, reports on the left hand side. Let's open up that balance sheet report on the left. By the way, if you're in the business view, the reports are located in the business overview and then the reports, just so you know where they are on that view. Let's tab to the right, open up the reports on the left hand side. This time the profit and loss, the P and the L. Closing up the hand boogie, change the range from 010123 to, to uh, let's say 12, hold on a sec. Let's go from 010122, 123122, and then run it. And then I'm tabbing to the middle, scrolling up, closing the hand boogie, change the range 010122, tab 123122, and run it to refresh it. Also opening the bank feeds, because that, that's where our focus is these days. First tab. Let's go to the banking on the left, banking up top, closing the hand boogie. If you're in the business view, by the way, the bank feeds are located in the bookkeeping and then in the transactions uh, up top and in the bank transactions. Okay, so now we're focusing in on the bank feed deposit, the revenue cycle, go into the flow chart to just get a recap of what we're doing here. The revenue cycle depends on the kind of industry you're in. At the end of the cycle, we do expect the checking account to go up. So it would link into the bank feeds in that way, but it will be dependent upon the flow that is what type of business you're in. Are you in gig work where you can just wait till it clears the bank, record revenue with the deposit? Are you at a cash register where you're gonna have to record the, the sales receipts, which we'll talk about later? Or are you in a system where you have to do the work first and invoice the system we're talking about with these presentations, in which case you have to enter an invoice and then you're gonna have to receive the payment in some way, shape or form from the client or customer. And then you're gonna have to make the deposit. Where are the bank feeds gonna fit into that process? We have at least three nodes it can fit into. We can create the invoice, increase in accounts receivable, other side going to sales, and then just wait till the revenue comes in through the bank feeds and connect the bank feed to the invoice. And the, the bank feed then will create the receive payment, making a deposit in essence with the receive payment. We did that last time. Or we can have this time, we're gonna have the invoice creates an increase in the accounts receivable, other side goes to sales. And then we can record the receive payment when we get paid. So when we get paid, we can record the receive payment here where we have two options. We can make the deposit directly into the uh, checking account with the receive payment and then use the bank feeds to double check that, meaning we're just using the bank feeds to kind of do our bank reconciliation in that case. It's not going to record anything new. It's just going to double check what's on the bank to the books. Or 
we can make the receive payment go into a clearing account, which is payments to deposit or like undeposited funds. And then we can connect the bank feed to the receive payment, which theoretically would take it out of the clearing account and then record it into the actual deposit uh, with, with a deposit form. Now note that the, when you have the receive payment, whether or not you're going to put it into like undeposited funds or the clearing account, one of the main functions of that would be that you need to group your receive payments together because the credit card, for example, is going to group multiple payments together or because you have multiple cash sales, for example, that are going to be grouped together when you actually get the deposit going into your checking account on the bank side of things. That's why you would need to put it into a clearing account and then record the deposit grouped together in such a way that it's going to be reflecting the same amount that's going to be on the bank statement. So if you have that kind of scenario, then you're kind of forced to record the received payment and make it go through undeposited funds. And then you're going to have to record the deposit on your end because you can't wait till it clears the bank because the, the deposit that's going to clear the bank is going to be including multiple receive payments or multiple sales receipts, right? It includes multiple sales that are included. That's where the problem is. So you're going to have to figure out what the grouping is of the transactions so that you can match out what's on your books to what's on the bank's books. But if you're in a situation where you're going to get paid with an electronic transfer or you're going to get paid, um, by check, for example, or, or even if it's cash, but you get it, you know, single sale by single sale, mainly check or electronic transfer, then you can record the received payment here directly into the checking account and match it to the bank feeds because the dollar amount will be the same one transaction by one transaction type of thing. So let's, let's look at those options and hopefully that'll be making it a little bit more clear. I'm going to make a new tab this time. I'm going to right click and duplicate the tab. Let's pull this to the front and and i'm going to do my sales receipt in here now the one i'm going to use this time let's let's use this uh 420 so let's say we use that 420 so i'm going to go up top and say all right let's have a new item and let's say this time we're going to say an invoice first so let's enter an invoice and let's say this is for customer four just to change things up customer number four and boom and bam and let's say this one is on let's say oh nine i think everything was in let's say 10 oh one uh 22 let's say and then i'm gonna say i'm just gonna create a service item again so let's just say hours and let's say the rate is five what did i say it was again i forgot 420 420 man 420 okay so there we have it so so this is going to then increase accounts receivable by 420 the other side is going to go to revenue by 420 and we're going to be tracking the sub ledger for the customer number four so that we can receive the payment on it just like normal on the invoice this would happen of course before we had the the receipt of the payment that we're tying out to in the bank feed so this would be the first thing that happens in our scenario in our story so we're going to say save it and close it boom and so then the next thing so now we can check that out if i go to my balance sheet and run it i'm going to say okay there's the uh checking account there's the accounts receivable accounts receivable there's the 420 invoice boom shaka laka all right and then the other side if i go back on up is on the income statement income statement services and if i go into that there's the 420 there okay going back up and then if i go to the first tab and i track this internally i can go to my sales my customers close up the ham bogey and down to customer number four, we've got our invoice. The next th thing we would expect to happen is to receive the payment. By the way, if you're in the business view, where's that located? It's under the get paid and pay area. And then the customer's on the left. So the next thing you would expect is the receive payment option. Last time, 
we connected the the deposit that cleared the bank directly to the invoice this time i'm going to record the receive payment and then try to connect the bank feed from there so we can also find by the way that open invoice we might track it another way by going to sales and then uh and then you might go to all sales and then sort your invoices this way by say the open invoices so that's another way that you could track that which is in a little slightly different place on the business view that's under bookkeeping and then transactions and then all sales that's where it is on the business view okay so given that then we could make our receive payment so let's do that so now we're gonna say okay we got paid we're gonna get paid by it so we're gonna say all right got the money let's say it happened on the 10 2 let's say and let's say that we got uh whatever you know cash let's just say it was a, a check let's say now the options are at this point in time we can put it directly into the checking account right we can put it into the checking account which means we're gonna have an increase to the checking account for which is going to be recorded not with a deposit but a receive payment and a decrease to the accounts receivable the receive payment will decrease accounts receivable that's like the defining factor of the form or we can put it into this clearing account which is called payments to deposit and then make the deposit into the checking account now normally when you put it into payments to deposit one reason you do that is once again because you might have multiple items that are being received possibly with cash or possibly by credit card which are going to be grouped together by the credit card company or you when you make the physical deposit into the bank and therefore you're going to have that clearing account to help you to tie out what goes into your checking account not only in terms of total dollar amount but the units of dollars so that you can do the the checking to the bank account possibly with the bank feeds to help you out with the bank reconciliation so if that were the case then i couldn't i couldn't really tie the bank feed to the receive payment i would have to actually make the physical the deposit in my system so that i can do that grouping thing but you also might say well if i'm going to tie the bank feeds to the receive payments maybe i'm just going to put it into the payments to deposit as another double check so when I get to the bank feeds, the bank feeds will take it out of payments to deposit and move it into the checking account. So it'll still record a transaction. So let's just see what that would look like. I'm going to, I'm going to save this. See, what are you talking about for crying out loud? Okay. Let's just see what I'm talking about here. I'll, I'll show you. So I'm going to go up top and we're going to say, then this is going to decrease the accounts receivable. So if I go into the accounts receivable, we've got a decrease there for the payment that's good the other side didn't go into the checking account yet we put it into this clearing account which is the same as undeposited funds in the desktop view and there's the 420 payment so nothing happened to cash because ca i mean the income statement because income was impacted when we did the invoice now normally if you were going to make a deposit then if i hit the plus button and we're going to say the next step would be to make a deposit in our flow chart here if i was going to make it not with the bank feeds but just enter a deposit you've got this like list so that if there were multiple payment items you can group them together so that it will be recorded in your checking account in the same grouping as what's going to be on the bank statement because if you got multiple cash deposits or multiple credit card deposits you want to put them into your checking account in the same grouping as they're going to show on the bank statement that's kind of like the point but uh, but now I'm going to say instead of doing that, I'm going to say instead of doing that, why did it, what was that? I don't, I just want to log out of this deposit form. We're going to try to connect the bank feed to it to record that transaction, which should move it from here to the checking account. So let's do that. I'm going to go, okay, if I go to the bank feeds then and I look at my transactions, here's the transaction. It didn't pick it up. It's not seeing it directly so let's go into it and the only way it would see it to match it is by by dollar amount and possibly by date so let's go into it and say okay i want to match this to an invoice if i go into the match then it's pulling up that payment so now you can see it's saying okay now i see the payment that we're matching to so there's the suggested matches one connected 
So now I'm going to record this, which should record the 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 deposit. So that next transaction. So I'm going to it's actually going to do a transaction. So I'm going to save it. And so now it's recorded that. And if I go to my balance sheet and run it, I should have a checking account item within it for that uh, for that deposit of the 420. Let's check it by dollar amount over here. There it is right there. So now it's recorded with a deposit form here and it made the deposit for it. So if I go into it, it made the deposit uh, form and it looks just like that deposit form that I was gonna, that I was showing you that we could have done on our side. All right, and then the other side decreased the clearing account. The other side decreased the clearing account and the payments to deposit and boom, uh, it's back down. So now it actually made a transaction. Now, the other way that you can do this is if I wanted to connect it to the second node is I can record the receive payment and make a deposit at this point in time. So let me just show you that. I can say, okay, let's go to the, let's do that again. This time I'm gonna do it for, this time I'm gonna do it for the $300. So I'll go first tab. We'll say, let's make another invoice, boom, invoice. And I'm gonna say customer four, five, customer number five. I don't know why I even need to make a new customer. I could just, but no, I just wanna, wanna make it all differentiated by customer. Makes perfect sense. Stop questioning my method, me. Stupid head trying to tell me how to do my thing. I forget this, what was the dollar amount again? The dollar amount was 300, 300. Okay, so this is gonna increase accounts receivable. The other side's gonna go to sales because it's an invoice and the sub ledger for customer five will also be reflecting that as well. So let's save that and close it. Let's go to the balance sheet just to double check it. So now we've got the accounts receivable went up customer number five, 300, boom. Other sides on the income statement. I got to refresh it if I want to see it, which I do. So I'm going to refresh it and go into customer number five. Uh, there is that one. There's the 300. Okay. Going back on over, then the sub ledger is impacted. And if I go into the first tab and look at my customers over here, I now have customer number five with an outstanding item. The next thing we would expect to happen is we receive the payment. So again, you could wait till it clears the bank and try to connect the bank feed to the invoice, but we're gonna record the receive payment and deposit it directly into the checking account with the receive payment thing this time, instead of using the clearing account. So I'm gonna say, let's do a receive payment. We got paid. We're gonna record it on our end. And I'm just gonna not put it into the, into the clearing account, but rather directly into the checking account. So now it's gonna go into the checking account with a receive payment form instead of a deposit form, but the transaction will go into the bank. That means when I check it to the deposits, it's just like I'm checking a normal deposit doing normal bank reconciliation stuff, right? Because I'm not actually gonna record a new transaction with the bank feeds now. It's just gonna verify that the transaction that I did record ties into what happened on the bank side. So that's just normal bank reconciliation stuff. So I'm gonna go back on over to the balance sheet and I'm gonna say, all right, now if I go into my checking, let's check out the checking. Then this one was for $300. I should have a sales uh, receipt. It should look a payment type of form. There it is, I think that's the one for 300. So if I go into that, there it is for customer number five and I scroll up to the top, the other side decreased the accounts receivable so I go into the accounts receivable and we can see that uh, what happened. There we go. So that has decreased. So we've got the increases and decreases. This is what happens in accounts receivable. You should be able to tick and tie stuff off. It goes up and then it goes down invoice and then you get the payment. And then the other side is going to go on to uh, if I look at my my detail over here on the customer side of things for customer number five. Now I've got the invoice and the payment. So if I look at the invoice, it has now been paid matching the payment. So that looks good. 
And then if I go to my bank feeds and I wait till it clears the bank, I might refresh it and maybe that'll help it to kind of see it. So if I refresh it, maybe then it might pick up, maybe it'll pick it up automatically. So then I'm gonna go down, let it think, yeah, it does. So, so there it is, it picked it up just by the dollar amount. So then it said, hey, I found a match. That's what it's saying. I can, I speak QuickBooks, so I'm interpreting it for you. So it's just like that. It's like, hey dude, I found a match. So we have the match here. So now this isn't gonna do anything when I record it because I already recorded in essence a deposit. So this is just saying, this is just matching, which helps me out with my bank reconciliation, which is a full service accounting system. We're not using QuickBooks in this case to, to make the financial statements. We're just using QuickBooks to double check, to verify the transactions in the checking account, which helps us out with just a normal bank reconciliation. So I'm gonna say match on that. And there it is, no, no uh, difference happened over here to the, to the, to the uh, actual transactions in my bank statement it just verifies so now we've we've tied it we've tied a deposit to the invoice we've tied a deposit to the received payment whether we put it into undeposited funds where it records a new transaction taking it out of undeposited funds or the clearing account payment to be deposited puts it into the checking account we've tied it to the received payment that acts like a deposit where the bank feed doesn't do anything except match help us out with the reconciliation and then next time maybe we'll do one more and record the actual full service where we record the actual deposit and then we tie the bank feeds uh, into that. And this would be something that you would have to do if you deal with like credit cards that are gonna make deposits com comprising of multiple receive payments or multiple sales receipts, or you have cash that you're gonna deposit which comprises of multiple sales receipts or multiple receive payment forms. We'll dive into that more next time.